science is because we had spies over here sending them all our information. I spoke in Russia. Trust me, you don't want what they've got. They've got a slogan over there. They say, what one American builds, ten Russians cannot understand. What one Russian builds, ten Americans cannot lift. <laughs> Build it all out of concrete and steel, you know. In 1959 was the 100-year anniversary of Darwin's book coming out. And so somebody said, wow, we have to get more evolution in the textbooks. So they lobbied Congress, and as far as I can figure out, the first time the government got involved in producing textbooks was in 1959, in the early 60s. It's interesting, the number of words teaching about evolution jumped from two to 3,000 to 33,000 just in a few years. Evolution became the state religion. By 1963, prayer was taken out of our schools. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare? By the way, since 1963, the number of words about evolution has diminished because the number of words in the textbook has diminished. The overall teaching has been dumbed down. The percentage has remained consistently high. 1963 is when sexually transmitted diseases began to skyrocket for 10 to 14-year-olds. Since 1963, the number of uh, kids with premarital sex have increased erratically since 1963. Unwed birth rates have gone up tremendously since 1963. Pregnancies have gone up over 500%. This is for 10 to 14-year-olds. The difference between those two numbers are those being aborted. We get into more on that on video number four. Now, one-third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that is not married. Illegitimate children. And if you are one of those, you listen carefully. God loves you, and He can use you in a powerful way. He said He'd be the father to the fatherless. If your parents messed up, you just shut your mouth and go serve God with your life, okay? Paul used Timothy in a great way. He was an illegitimate child, never should have been born. Unmarried couples living together has increased 725%. God's Word hasn't changed. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's one of the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. And by the way, Jesus said, if you even look and lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. By the way, ladies, I know you want to understand this, but that's why it's important how you dress. My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. You figure it out, okay? Divorce rates have gone crazy in this country. Violent crimes have increased nearly 1,000%. I'm not that old, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody else remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. And you go to the average high school and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window. And the truck wasn't even locked and nobody got shot in school in those days, did they? You probably didn't hear about this, but the kids at Columbine High School that did all the shooting were very strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Hitler's birthday on purpose to commemorate Adolf Hitler. They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black. Hitler hated black people. More on that on video number five. And right after the shooting, Rosie O'Donnell got on her program and said, See, we need more gun control. Uh, Rosie, those kids broke 18 gun laws going into that school. You think two more gun laws would have stopped them? See, Rosie can't seem to figure it out. Can't seem to be able to figure it out. But one guy figured it out and put it on the tire cover on his van. And I saw that and I got a picture. I said, man, this explains the whole thing. He said, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie being fat. Uh, it's not the spoon's fault, Rosie, okay? And it wasn't the gun's fault either. Okay, we get a lot more on gun control in video five. Very politically incorrect. You don't want to watch that one. Uh, <laughs> SAT scores have plummeted since 1963. Actually, in 95, they had to dumb down the test. They made the test easier to make the kids look smarter. Teen suicide rates gone crazy in this country. Now listen, if I told you, if you kiss a frog, it'll turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on now, be honest. <laughs> Looks like only two. Okay, good. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but in the textbooks it does. Yes, boys and girls, we started like an amoeba. And we slowly evolved to a frog. There's Grandpa. And then very slowly became a prince. 
you know, they're still teaching the same fairy tale. The only difference is if the frog turns into the prince, quick, prince quickly, we call it a fairy tale. But if the frog turns into the prince slowly, we call it modern science. The only difference is time. See, boys and girls, a kiss won't do it now. Today you have to have billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that expression before? Billions of years ago. Yeah, it's in the magazines and National Pornographic. A geographic, I mean. Billions and billions of years ago. They teach you like it's some kind of fact of science, you know. Here's a fourth grade textbook. Millions of years ago. Now, kids, listen. If anybody ever says, millions of years ago, just say, uh, excuse me, were you there? They'll say, no, of course I wasn't there. And then say, now, teacher, do you know the earth is millions of years old? Or is this what you believe? Is this really part of science? You see, science is things we can observe and study and test. Sometimes people say to me, well, Hovind, were you there when God made the world? I say, no. And I admit mine's a religion. Now, why don't you admit yours is a religion? Hmm. And once we've both admitted we have a religion, then answer my question. Why do I have to pay for your religion to be taught in our school system? Hmm. That'll shut them up. Science is things we can observe and study and test. And the professors I debate will say, well, no, we can't observe the earth is millions of years old, but everybody believes it is. No, they don't. Most Americans think the earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Only 4% are atheistic. I think that 4% ought to go start themselves a private school and teach evolution to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it. And they ought to get it out of our public school system. That's my humble, totally unbiased opinion. <laughs> That's right. Now, it is true that slightly more than half of the scientists in America believe in evolution. Not all of them, but slightly more than half. Those are the ones that have not been to my seminar yet. <laughs> but even if a bunch of scientists believe something, that doesn't make it true. And that's not how you determine truth. You know, majority opinion. The scientists used to teach all the planets go around the Earth. They used to teach big rocks fall faster than little rocks. That was taught for 2,000 years, and it's not true. They used to teach, if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood, you'll get better. That's how George Washington died. There were places all over America to get your blood taken out if you were sick. You could tell where they were because they had a white pole with a red stripe around it. The barber was the blood letter. Still is today, once in a while. <laughs> and right beside George was a Bible that told him the life of the flesh is in the blood. Man, if they'd have read that verse, he might still be alive today. Uh, well, he would live longer anyway. So, listen, if you went scuba diving and you found a treasure chest full of gold coins, and I asked you the simple question, when did the boat sink? You say, I don't know. Uh, well, look at the dates on the coins. If there's a coin in there from 1750, you ought to be able to figure out that boat sank after 1750. How many can figure this out with no help at all? It couldn't sink before that, Right? You find the youngest coin in the box, and that becomes your limiting factor. Now, how old is the earth? Well, there are some factors that limit the age of the earth, just like the coins would limit the age the boat sank. There are all kinds of things that limit the age of the earth. We're going to cover those in the next session. Different ways to show the earth cannot be billions of years old. But if you found a fossil like a dinosaur bone, I've got a copy of one here on the table. The real one's in our museum. We have quite an interesting museum there in Pensacola. If you find the dinosaur bone, you should notice two things about it immediately. Number one, it does not talk. Number two, it does not have a date stamped on it. It does not say, made by a dinosaur in 70 million B.C. in Taiwan. <laughs> they don't say that. So how would you tell the age of a fossil? How would you tell the age of the earth? Well, the only way to tell the age of something for sure is to find the guy who made it. He knows for sure how old it is. And the Bible says, God created the heaven and the earth. And the Bible says, Jesus created heaven and earth. Well, guess what? That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. The Bible does teach the Trinity doctrine. Okay? All three are called God. And Jesus said in Matthew 19, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Same thing in Mark 10, 6. Well, if that was the beginning, then we can figure out the age of the earth. Because you can go through the Bible and add up the dates. The Bible says death came because of sin. That's why we have death in the world. 
By man came death, the Bible says. And Adam all died. Adam brought death into this world. And Adam was the first man. And Adam lived and with Eve. Eve was his wife. And Eve was the mother of all living. Hmm. And Adam was 130 years old when his son was born. And that boy was 105 when his son was born. And that boy was 90 when his son was born. If you go through the Bible and add up the dates, you can make a graph like this one here. We've got these charts laminated if you want them for placemats when your skeptic friends come for lunch. <laughs> you can stir up an interesting conversation. Or if you get our seminar notebook, the last page will fold out to be one of those charts right there. If you want to study some interesting stuff about the age of the earth. If you add up the dates in the Bible, it comes to about 4,000 B.C. Not millions of years ago, roughly 4,000 B.C. Now, I'm not one of those guys that tries to put an exact date on it. I don't say that the creation was 4004 B.C., October 23rd at 2 in the afternoon. Okay. I don't think you can get that close from Scripture. I think Adam was made in the afternoon because it was just before Eve. It's the only clue I found. <laughs> and I can't prove this, but I think I figured out why God made Adam first. I think God made Adam first because he didn't want any advice on how to do it. <laughs> how many agree with that one? <laughs> I, I can see it now. No, God, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> now, B.C. means before Christ. Almost all new textbooks have changed it. They're not calling it B.C.E., before the common era. That's another long story, how Christ is gone from our schools. Of course, they blame God when something goes wrong, but, you know... They don't, they don't realize he's been kicked out. Um, here the textbook now says the earth is billions of years old. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Was he lying? Did he not understand science? Or was he right? Uh, how old is the earth anyway? And who cares? What difference does it make? Oh, it makes a big difference. And we'll cover all that in the next session. How to prove this earth cannot be billions of years old. But then if it is only 6,000, what about dinosaurs? What about the Garden of Eden? Why did they live to be 900 years old? What about Grand Canyon? How did the light from the stars get here? Where did all the languages come from? Where did all the races come from? That's why my seminar is so long, folks. We cover all that stuff. <laughs> I'm talking as fast as I can go, but we cover all that. Just hang in there. We'll get to more of that in the next session. Thank you so much. Welcome to our second session on our seminar part one about the Big Bang, the Big Dud, and the age of the earth. And for those just joining us, I do believe the Bible is the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. And I believe it teaches exactly what the truth is about the age of the earth. Here's my family, minus the grandkids that have been coming pretty regular here lately. And we're excited about all that. The Bible says, in the beginning. When was the beginning? First three words in the book, it must be kind of important. When was the beginning? And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. Hebrews chapter 1. When was the beginning? How old is the earth? I believe this is a critically important topic. There are some Christians who say it's not important. Oh, I think it's very important, as we'll see in a few minutes here. Jesus said, all things were created by him. Colossians 1. By him were all things created. Jesus made everything, so he probably knows how old it is. And he said, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Same thing in Mark 10, 6. That was the beginning. The Bible says death came by sin. The question is very simple. Did man bring death into the world, like the Bible says? Or did death bring man into the world, like evolution says? Total opposite, folks. Somebody's wrong. The Bible says man brought death into the world, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Some people say, well, what, didn't, didn't, animal, didn't plants die before Adam sinned? Well, you better decide if plants are alive first. We covered that on video number seven. Are plants really alive in the biblical sense? The Bible says Adam was the first man. It's real clear on this topic. It says Adam lived 130 years and had a son. His boy lived 90 years and had a son. That boy lived or 105. And then that boy lived 90 years and had a son. If you go through the dates in the Bible and add them up, you're going to get about 6,000 years ago. Roughly 4,000 B.C. Now, not millions, that's for sure. So the Bible teaches about 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a big flood. The time before the flood was very different. We'll cover more on that on video two, what the Garden of Eden was like and why they lived to be 900 years old. But the fact is, the Bible dates add up to about 6,000. Now, I do a lot of debates at universities and radio and TV call and talk shows.